good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Springbok press conference. Uh, we've got Coach Jacques Minaba and uh, Captain Sia Felici. Please raise your hands for questions. We'll be on this link for 10 minutes, and then we'll switch over to the South African League. So, any hands raised? Jan. Jan de Thank you, Zina. Uh, thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Sia. Um, I, I know it's probably disappointing and, and a loss like that, it's probably never comfortable to answer these questions, but um, right at the end, there were a couple of penalties and I, I know that it's probably no discipline issue, but how disappointing is it that you fight back uh, from such a slow start just to lose it that way in the end? Uh, maybe Jacques and Sia, please. Yeah, from my side, I think, uh, Jan, yeah, listen, it's obviously disappointing. And, and if you think uh, it, it's the third test this year that we lost that way, you know, where we were like 78 minutes in the game, we were leading with two points or three points, uh, two points or one point, and uh, then we we don't finish the game. And uh, that's something that we will have to look at uh, and we will have to improve it. But it's very disappointing, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, I Jacques and Sia. Sia, the yellow card, um, it seemed like you were contesting for the ball and then the referee felt you, you tackled Marchant in the air. Uh, do you feel you were unlucky to get the yellow card? Um, yeah, I thought the ref made the decision there and yeah, um, we'll have to look at it after, but yeah, um, I, I, I don't want to comment on that. Any further questions? News. Yeah, did you feel like um, you were unlucky with some of the decisions today, the officiating? Is that for me or for Joe? Uh, both of you. Um, no, mm. uh, I, I, it's something that we will. The, 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 um, it's something we will have to look at. We always do, James, uh, in terms of getting alignment with the referees. You know, uh, pictures that they see and that we see. Um, uh, we need to get alignment in terms of uh, maybe we see it a little bit different than they do or they see it different than we do. And, and the key thing in doing that alignment is basically to get a better product for the spectator. You know, the more we are aligned with our ref sees it, the less we will make errors and there will be less penalties. There will be more, more ball in play time uh, and it will be a more open, non-stop start game. So, so that's something we always do uh, because, uh, like I say, we would like to get a better product out there. And, uh, and uh, I don't know what the penalty count was tonight, but I thought we didn't concede, uh, I think, England conceded more penalties than we do, but I'm under correction there. So uh, no, I, I've got no issues uh, uh, with the referee and the team of four. And what did you make of this England team? It's been described over here as a, a, a bit of a new look England team, a bit of a new era. Did you see anything different from what you've seen before from them? Um, yeah, I thought, like I said, I thought they, uh, um, they, they, they're going to be a quality team. Uh, from the start, when uh, in in this whole week uh, we spoke about, listen, they're a quality team. If you look at them, I think if you look at their starting team, they had uh, a, a nine players that played in the World Cup final. We had ten, so I don't. I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of that, and uh, um, so yeah, they uh, um, they I thought they they uh, they played well and they gave a proper test match uh, for their home fans here at Twickenham, uh, and it's always. It's a great rivalry for us, the Springboks against England here in Twickenham. And uh, in the last two test matches since I've been involved, uh, 2018 and now, it's, it's a one-pointer. And that's how close it is. And we knew it's going to be a grind uh, uh, like that. Percy? Coach, Jacques, okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question later on, on, on the South African Black Swimming in Africa. I'm just going to ask you in English, though. Um, just looking after 13 test matches, though, so I know a coach wouldn't want to answer this type of deep questions after a, a defeat. But are you happy with where the, cha the, the world champions, the Springboks, uh, 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 have you guys showed some um, great strides this past season after 13 test matches? Uh, Percy, yeah, no, listen, I said uh, to the guys in the change room, I think this is a team that's better than, uh, than uh, I don't know what the win percentage would be, but, but it's a team that, that's, that's better than that. And, uh, but in saying that, uh, and, and I don't want to say, I, I think 
we lost a lot of uh, development in uh, 2020 uh, because we didn't play any test matches. And we always said, listen, this year is for us. Listen, let, let's see where we are compared to where we were in 2019. And I, I, I've made no fuss about it in saying that uh, I, I don't think we're there, there yet. Now we've played a full year of rugby, of international rugby. We know where we are. We know what we have to improve on. And uh, now we have to build. We've got two years or one and a half year uh, leading up to France 2023. And uh, we, we, there's, there's a lot of things that we would need to work on uh, uh, to get better. Nick? Uh, thanks, yeah, Chuck. Uh, the penalty count was England conceded 18 penalties. I think you were either eight or nine. Just obviously very unusual for a side to concede 18 penalties and, and win. Um, does that does that leave you with any overall frustration? Uh, Nick, no. Statistically, the team that kicks the most concede the most penalties, uh, run the uh, run the least or least ball carries. Um, end up and makes the most tackles. Uh, if you look at those four stats, they tend to win games uh, more often than not. So uh, no, it it it, it doesn't. Uh, it's normally like that. Ross, how's it? Thanks very much. How's it, guys? Um, so yeah, obviously it was a very slow start to the game for you guys. Um, you know, what did you sort of attribute that to? And then in the second half, when you started uh, kicking it up very nicely. Um, you had a couple of chances to go for poles where you maybe went to the 22 instead and were stopped just short and obviously missed a few trial opportunities. Do you think that uh, sort of cost you guys in the end? Um, first question. Oh, I thought, I thought they, st they started well. Um, they, they plan started working earlier in the game. They caught us uh, once or twice, but we weren't stressing about that. You know, we knew uh, there, were, there would be moments in the game where they, they, they get it right and I thought we were able to come back uh, slowly started chipping away with the three pointers. You know, we go for touch because we feel we we have the ascendancy or in the mall or if it's a scrum, whatever. And yeah, we are obviously we would have loved to take it, have taken those opportunities, but yeah, we we came close and obviously it plays an impact at the at the end of the game. But you know, at that, that specific time, that's what I thought we thought was the best decision as a group. Um, yeah, of course, at the end, when you look at the game and we lose by two points, those things do do matter. Obviously, we wish we had capitalized on them. We can take another question or two on this link, and then we'll switch over to the South African link. Yeah, can I ask, see a question? Yes, you can proceed. So, see, I'll just ask you a similar question as, as the captain of the Springboks. Just your take on, on how this season has gone for you as the leader of the squad after 13 test matches. Do you think you guys have made some proper strides over this past year? Yeah. Um, uh, we're obviously not happy with 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 some of the, the losses that we we had this year, um, but you know the effort that we put in as a group and the commitment, the stuff that the coaching staff look for, you know, um, the the work rate and committing yourself as hard as you can in the V shape as a group. I thought that that the sacrifices we had to make, you know, and no excuses mindset. We know whether we're in isolation or whatever, that really, um, um, you know. Um, impressed me with the group and, and how honest we are with, with one another and the fact that you know no matter what we went through we're still not happy about where we are but I am um, but I am proud to be part of this group and I'm proud of the effort that the guys have shown and the the support we've, we've had from our families and the people back home it's really, it's really been great but like Chuck said you know we missed out on last year but now we know where we are and we know where we can where, where we can improve you know it hurts a lot to the, the amount of games that we've lost by one or two points, you know, it, it, it's really tough. But hopefully, we come back in the next in the seven months, and you know, we know exactly what to work on and what to fix. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.